My name is Brad McNutt with the Moulton Church of Christ, and if you have a minute, I would love to tell you why we love Jesus. When we think about Jesus, we use sometimes big and technical terms like incarnation. But what does that really mean when we distill it down to everyday language? The incarnation describes the process by which Jesus became human. He left heaven, entered into a human body, and came to the earth. In John chapter 1 and verse 14, the apostle said, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The word translated dwelt in our English translations is the word for tabernacled. And we're supposed to get the image of the Old Testament tabernacle. You remember how when Moses had finished the Old Tabernacle in Exodus chapter 40, the glory of God came in and its presence was made there or was manifest there and it continued to reside there throughout the wilderness wanderings. When Jesus came into his body in the earth, it was that tabernacle. God was amongst his people again the same way he was in the tabernacle. As a matter of fact, we might say even more intimately than he was in the tabernacle because in the tabernacle you couldn't even approach the most holy place where the glory dwelt. Now it was dwelling in flesh. Further, when he was came in the incarnation, it was so that he would have a body that he might sacrifice. In Hebrews chapter 10, verses 1 through 10, when he discusses the insufficiency of Old Testament animal sacrifices, he, he quotes the Psalms and says that Jesus came into the world for, and God had prepared a body for him so that he might be a sacrifice, and by that sacrifice we are sanctified once and for all. In 2 Corinthians 8 and verse 9, the apostle said, You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. The Greeks had multiple words for poor. The one that is used in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9 is the one that describes an individual who is a beggar. When Jesus came to earth, he was not a wealthy man. He did not have a home. He depended upon the hospitality of other people during his public ministry. But he came into this world to live as a poor man and to die as a poor man so that we would one day be rich men and rich women in heaven with him. As one writer described Philippians 2, 5 through 11, you know that great song about Jesus. He says, Jesus could not have been any higher and he could not have gone any lower. Because though he was in the form of God, he didn't think that that was something to be held on to. But he came down in the likeness of men and was made in the form of a servant. And he became obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. And for that reason, God has highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And so the fact that Jesus loved us enough to step out of heaven and to step into our human experience in a fallen and sinful world tells us of the love that He has for us. So why do we love Jesus? Well, because He became like me so that one day I might become like Him and live with Him forever.